Hello guys, welcome to the channel, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modelling Bench and I have a review for you today and it's not of this this is the Airfix 135th scale K2 Ambulance uh, it came out last year I believe and I built this, I did a full sort of beginner's video build on this all about how it all went together and everything we got some mud, now. I've got some better mud now and I can actually uh, go over it again but um, yeah, lovely little build, lovely little model uh, it's got all the full interior. I've made the doors hinge so they open. I've made the doors hinge so they open. Um, there we go. I've made the doors hinge so they open. And you can see inside there we have all the stretcher detail. We have the floor all scuffed up and everything. And uh, all looking great. And you can see that down inside there we've got the door going into the driver's area is open as you can see if you look inside there you can see the door is is half open so it just adds to a bit of um adds to a bit of effect so there we go so that's the airfix 135th scale ambulance now if you wanted a 148th one of these to go on your diorama with your lancaster or whatever then you were stuck with accurate miniatures and i think that was about that and now Tammy have come to the rescue. And yes, they haven't called it a K2 ambulance, obviously for um, licensing reasons. Uh, but they've called it a British two-ton 4x2 ambulance. So we all know what that is. I've got dust on my fingers from the pigments on that model. So this is a brand new kit, just been released. The, it says here series number 105. The actual kit number is 32605, which I find strange because all my other... Um, 48 scale Tamiya kits are start with an 8 so unusual and I don't know why they've called it 105 when it's 3265 I would have thought it would have been called 605 but uh there we go but anyway we've got the kit here um it's uh a British two-ton 4 by 2 ambulance authentically reproduced in a compact 48 scale truck-based form captured with extensive research succinctly and realistically depicted suspension perfect for dioramas, dioramas with other British vehicles and aircraft so um, yeah very very nice indeed you can also get the little 148 scale uh, Tilly to go with it which is very nice looking around the box we got on the side there we got in Japanese some history about it no doubt and there we've got some um, three angle images of it there end of the box is just the, the same old art with the kit number and then we've got some more, uh, they're telling us to do XF58 olive green. Um, I think the actual colour for this would have been AK's SCC15 olive drab. But the Tamiya um, XF58 is very nice as well. So Tamiya Irvine, it's a 2023 made in Japan. So it's a brand new kit. I have opened the box because I just got this delivered from Hannant's. And I also bought some photo etch in that and they put everything in the box, which was good, which made the packaging smaller. So um, that was good. And they put everything under the kit as well. So rather than having it all on top, but then I suppose if it got turned over in shipping, then it would be on top. I don't know. So in the bag, in the box, we've basically got two bags, sorry, three bags. So we've got two green sprues and one clear. We have a, a sheet here with some information all about it on there. You can have a read. There, if you want to freeze it, you can have a read there of all that. So that's just a single sided piece of paper. We have a decal sheet, which is it's sort of pinch sealed, uh, but it is open to the elements. So be careful, guys, if you're storing these models in your loft, especially this time of year in the winter, uh, make sure you take the decals out because they'll get damp and they'll be ruined. Um, so we've got instrument panel there. We've got some <clears throat> identification plaques there serial numbers and obviously our red crosses that's interesting they've got round vents in the roof whereas airfix have got the rectangular vents in the roof so obviously there was a you could have either i'm not sure if one was post-war pre-war whatever i would say probably this model the airfix is probably i think more accurate than the gecko they have different shaped grills um this one and the gecko and i believe this one to be more accurate that's just my opinion um, so first thing we'll do, we'll have a look at the instructions as we always do with my reviews. All right, sorry, a bloody uh, memory card ran out there, and I'm talking to myself, and the phone, the, the phone, the camera doesn't beep or anything. It just I looked up and it was flashing mem no memory card. Great. Um, anyway, so let's look at the instructions. So 
British two tone four by two ambulance, 148 scale, brand new kit, as I say, from Tamiya. So we've got here, we've got our color call outs on the front, obviously Tamiya colors, recommended tools. They're recommending Tamiya multi purpose cement clear here. I'll have to get some of that and try it out. Not sure what it's like, not sure if it's just a PVA glue or whatever. And then going into the book, it's a, it's a sort of scissor type thing opening up, a concertina, should I say, not scissor. So uh, here we've got two options, we've got A and B, both say British Forces 1940-45, um, and the only difference I can see on them is the actual roundels, the, well the roundels, the, the uh, red cross markings on this one you have on the roof and, and there, and here you have big ones on the side and here's just as the little ones. So look at what period you're doing, look at what area you're doing it in, remember these weren't used extensively on RAF bases, they were used a lot by the, RE, the US Air Force apparently. So, um, you know, but they were used in Africa and it, all over the world in, in the war on the front lines in France and everything. So uh, they, they've got, a, they, they did a lot of work, a lot, a lot of work. Um, so going into the build here, we've got the chassis, we've got leaf springs going in. Looks like it's um, very, very simple construction. Looks like it's ideal for the beginner as well, because they've got this, this typical Tamiya thing. You can see like here, and you can see over here where they're telling you to remove the the extra bits, you know, it's um, it's really good for the beginner, stuff like that, because they're sort of not sure if they're supposed to be there or not. Um, so yeah, if you want to get one of these and build along with me, I will be making this very soon. It might even be a little Christmas build, eh? Um, oh, if you're watching this in the future, today is December the 5th, 2023, so that's why I might make a couple of references to Christmas, you know. So, um, wheels going together here, so we've got the, sorry, axles going in there, so you've got the rear axle, one piece with the with the prop shaft and everything which is nice front axle one piece with all the steering gear so it's all very simple very stable it should be easy to get it to sit on four wheels um front wheel construction going on there rear wheel construction make sure you don't get them mixed up you can tell the difference the rear wheel has a sort of large round center hub the front has like a spider um the brake drum on the back the front has the two parts there and the uh, rear has the three so uh, don't go forcing it together and ruining the model. Um, so attaching the wheels, adding the top of the fuel tanks, worth getting those nice seams on there because as you can see here, they are quite visible on the finished model. So get some nice seam cleaning going on in there. Adding the window, this is where they're telling you to use this Tamiya clear cement. I must get some and see what it is. Um, spare wheel going in. And then we've got a box going in there. Not sure if that's a battery box or what it is, but at the top of it is the seat. So it's XF49, so it's like a canvas seat. Uh, and then here, XF2, they're telling us to paint those little spotlights. You'll probably do that after you've built the model. Um, so here we're adding the floor and then building up the actual main body of the uh, of the ambulance itself. Looks like we've got no interior detail at all, which is a shame. It's telling us down here, attach parts in numbered order, one, two. So you've got one, two. So you're going to put the two sides on first and then add the back. So uh, remember that. And then going over here, we've got number six, step six, and this is wonderful. You've got these large sort of mud guards on the back here uh, with the mud flaps on the bottom on the rear. And they are, as you can see, they are quite flimsy. So what Tammy have done, they've got, you, you put them in and then bring them round and they sort of glue onto the inside of the, of the body. Um, you may even want to fit those before you fit the sides and then it'd be easier to get glue on the inside there. Um, but they do the same on the front ones as well. Sorry, the front rear mud guards, the forwardmost rear mud guards, and then here we've got some steps going in for the front cab there, adding the chassis, and then we're adding the driver's seat, gear stick, and handbrake there, and then going over the page, building up the uh, the bonnet and the side panels. Looks like we've got some lovely positive areas there for uh, for contact. You don't have to get any glue on your seams, and then we've got the headlight uh, lenses going into the headlights. Looks like they're molded in with the grille. And looking at this, it looks like the grill might be the wrong shape. We'll have a look in a minute. And then adding the bonnet to the grill, adding the windscreen inside the uh, windscreen framework there. Be interested to see if we've got any framework molded on the screen. And then here we're adding the bonnet to the scuttle. I would probably suggest not doing that at this stage. Probably do that as you fit it to the body. And then if you have got any angular problems, you know, it's better to have a tiny gap there than end up with a great big gap down here because it's it's all up too high. Building up the instrument panel here and the bulkhead with the pedals and everything in it. 
telling you again to remove these little bits, add in the steering column, driver figure there with all the colour call outs for everything and the side doors going on there. And then going over the page, we've got the um, the dashboard going in with the with the bulkhead and the steering wheel, driver plonking down onto a seat and then that big front end going on. And then we're going to build up the cab roof, showing us how it all goes together and uh, removing bits and pieces there, which is a nice touch. And then we've got the vents going on the roof. They're telling us to put the decal on first. If you do in version A, if you do in version B, do not apply it. You've got the circular vents here, which indicate an earlier model. As you can see, the Airfix have got the square vents, which is the later model, I believe. Uh, this may even be post-war. I'm not sure. I'm sure the people in the comments down below will... Uh, people will comment down below, is what I should say. You've got a massive front marking on there. So make sure that goes forward. And you've got your little cab roof going on there. And that's it. So uh, painting, um, basically they're calling out XF58, which is which is olive green. Now, colours of these are sort of up for debate. Um, <coughs> excuse me. As we know, around about 44, um, or even slightly earlier than that, maybe it was 43, uh, everything changed to the olive drab. Now, you've got SCC 15, which was the British olive drab, and I think it was around about 1944, everything changed to the US number 9 olive drab. Now, I'm not sure if that would have involved these or not, so check your references. There's also talk that the, um, the famous one you can see with the Queen, um, God rest her soul, stood next to it. Um, that one looks to be sort of greener, so that it may be SC15, it may have been an old bronze green colour, but of course, as you can see from the photos, they've got a sheen to them. They've got, they used to like wipe them down with petrol oil or something and make, give them a little bit of a sheen to for the photographs and everything. So, very, very difficult to tell. Another thing to look at is these serial numbers on the bonnet. You can see here we've got A26443 and we've got A23155. These are written in like a stencil type fashion and these are like a solid lettering. Um, it would also appear that later in the war they would only have had the lettering on the offside and the rear, not on the actual, um, on the near side of the bonnet. So near side is the is the side closest to the curb when you're driving down the road so in great britain we drive on the we right hand drive so we drive on the left so the left hand side is near the curb so the left hand is the near side in america the near side would be the right hand side yeah um what concerns me is a26443 you can see on this one a121072 and then you look at the one the Queen stood next to, that's got another digit again. So they're adding more and more digits as they went on. So these look as though the serial numbers are fairly early. Not sure. As I say, people will comment down below. People will argue. People will debate. <laughs> it, will, it will be a fantastic argument. Um, but yeah, as far as colours go, um, I, th I think probably SCC 15 would be a sort of, you know, a, a, a mid to late war colour. Um, or if you just go for the XF58 and get it dusty, I mean, who knows what colour that one is? Who can tell? No one is the answer, because no one knows. I don't even remember what colour I painted it myself. I think I did it at CC15. But if you go back and look at my videos, you'll see it on there. Um, so there we go. Also worth remembering, like on the box front, they've shown us the model here with the Lancaster in the background. And apparently, from what I'm reading, the British didn't use them a lot um, during the war. On RAF bases, they tended to use the, the Americans tended to use these. So uh, again, worth checking your references. I'm sure people will dispute what I'm saying. Tell me I'm absolutely completely wrong, and then someone will ask will say, You're "Dead right, Nigel. They never use them." So you can't. You just don't know what to believe. But uh, we always get some good discussion going on down below. So um, for the second time now, let's look at the decals. Um, second time for me. So the decal sheet's very nice. As you can see, we've got the large decal there for the roof with the round vents in, and then we've got the smaller decals here for the uh, for the other versions. Um, very nice, nice deep colours, uh, properly in register and everything. Unfortunately, Tamiya decals said they're quite thick, but we give them a clear coat and try and get them to sit in. We've got the instrument panel there, as you can see, and then we've got the serial numbers here 
And like you can see there, the 26443 is in a stencil style, but the 23155 is like a solid. So I'm not sure which is early and which is late. So there we go. Um, very nice indeed. So they will probably go down lovely. As I say, I am going to build this very soon. I keep saying I'm going to build things, but I am going to definitely do this because it's going to be a very quick little build that people will enjoy. So uh, there we go. Right, so looking at the sprues, I've opened up the bags in my interim period. So sprue A here, we've got the main, feels a little bit oily. We've got the main chassis, got the driver figure there, leaf springs front and rear. We've got the rear axle here with the drive shafts all moulded in. Tops of the fuel tanks, front axle. Um, there's the seat there for the passenger. We've got the rear mud guards. And then we've got the wheels with the wheel backs, spare wheel there, exhaust system, roll up doors and rear view mirrors. Uh, so that's the bottom of the chassis. Looking at the top side, um, I have already picked this up, so I've got to sound surprised because it's the second run. I cannot believe what Tammy have done here. We have ejector pin marks on the top of the step. This is Airfix. Okay, no ejector pin marks. This is Tamiya. Four ejector pin marks on the top of the step. They've got two great big ejector pins there. They've got two ejector pins there. Why have they had to put those four in there? It's really annoying. And they're also recessed, so you've got to fill them. You can't just sand them. So, and you can imagine trying to get into that there area there, that triangular area there. How on earth are you going to do that? Probably the best thing to do is cut some thin card neatly, put it down over there, and then just cover it Mr. Service or just cover it in mud or something. But that is, for 2023, that is bad. Very bad, especially for Tamiya. Come on, it's ridiculous. Um, we've also got some massive ejector pin marks on the insides of the mud guards, so you might want to sand them out as well. And also, they've what they've done here, which is what everybody does these days, we've got a chamfer on the outside edge to make the edge of the mud guard look thinner, but the chamfer is quite pronounced, so I tend to sand that back and blend it in. You'll see when I build it, I'll, I'll show you what I do. Um, tire tread is all right. It's the same as these. It's all right, but they could be better. Um, the, the tread actually is like that. It's it's curved, but obviously they can't mould it like that and put a curve in it. So they've curved the top at the bottom straight. But you know, if you're going to cover them in mud and that, it doesn't matter anyway. But uh, yeah, that, I was not expecting that. That is very poor, very poor indeed. Right, I haven't looked at this sprue yet. I got halfway through doing that one when the when I noticed the camera was gone, so I had to start again. Um, right, so this one here, this is obviously all our main body parts. This is sprue B, and uh, straight away, okay, so. We've got a million ejector pin marks on the inside of there, but they're really, really shallow, so you're probably not even going to see them, and no one's probably going to worry about them anyway. We've got a million ejector pin marks on there, but that's inside the ambulance body, so that doesn't matter. Again, here and here and here, so that's okay. We've got ejector pin marks there we need to get rid of. Obviously, ejector pin marks on the inside the roof, inside the grill, that's not going to matter. And on the bottom of the floor, some people won't worry about it, but I, I don't like to see them. Um, but I've also noticed, we've got sink marks on here. So this roof, which should be flat, okay, is, well not, it's not flat, it's got a line down the middle, but we, you can see we've got sink marks in it on here. You can see them in the light, so they're going to have to be filled because it doesn't have that undulating finish to it. Um, we've also got sink marks in the bottom of the rear doors here. You can see them there. So they're going to have to be filled. And I'm also seeing there's something here. For some reason on the rear of this roof, they've got these two really deep marks. I don't know why. I don't know what they're for, but I can feel them on that side. So they're going to have to be sanded out. And... They are very, very thin, so you may even go through. 
we shall see. Um, there's something going on. If you look on those engine side covers, I'm not sure. It almost looks like an ejector pin mark, but it's not because the ejector pins are on the back. But you can see there's like a polished area above the front latch on both of them. A bit strange. Other than that, it's, um, it's, it's all very nice. I'm not sure about that grill. I'm not sure if they've got the later grill on there. Looking at the curve on the top, it looks like it might be the later shaped grill. But uh, hmm, might be okay. It's got the large, which means the early the large bulge there for the spare wheel. The, the later ones had like a, like a like a pressing, almost like a steel pressing, rather than this fabricated thing. But the yeah, doors there and everything. We've got no windows in the side so we can only show those closed up, same as that one. Uh, but we have got the window there for that door. But yeah, um, I've got to be honest, I'm a little bit disappointed. Uh, for a brand new Tamiya kit and everybody's like, Tamiya, 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 you know, wow, 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 awesome, the best ever. But I've got a brand new 2023 tooling here and it's covered in sink marks. Sink marks, sink marks, sink marks, sink marks, sink marks. No, there's something there, but I'm not going to worry about that. Um, yeah, it's covered in sink marks. We also have sink marks in the bonnet. I hope you can see them if I catch them in the light. There you go. Because we've got these moulded recesses in here to attach these front engine side covers, it's resulted in, you can see the bulges in the bonnet. Yeah, you can especially see it on this side. So to give us this lovely construction with this great big huge tab, they've ruined the bonnet. This is like, was this designed by an apprentice? There's sick marks in there as well. Of course, I'm looking for it now. I'm looking for problems. I was expecting a beautiful little kit. But, uh, never mind, it's, it's all good. We'll build it, we'll put it together. As I said earlier, you know, this is the only alternative th to the Accurate Miniatures one. And I believe Accurate Miniatures, or is it Accurate Armour? I can't remember if it's Accurate Miniatures or Accurate Armour now. I think it's Accurate Armour, isn't it? Um, I believe they've closed their doors now, so this is probably going to be our only option. Um, hopefully, Tamiya will come out of a full range of RAF ground equipment in 48 scale, like a Bedford refueler, uh, an AEC Matador, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? In 30 second scale as well, please, Airfix. But, um, yeah, on the whole, it's it, it looks nice, but it could have been a lot better. I mean, I look at the clear parts. I've opened the bag on this. I haven't looked at these yet. I've opened the bag so we can have a look. Um, yeah, clear parts are very, very nice. We have a recess on this side to sink into the frame of the plastic, and then on this side we have it. No, it's completely flat. So, there is no internal framing, so you have to try and mask it and paint the internal framing. Otherwise, when you look inside, you're just going to see a large clear panel. Um, whereas with this one, as you can see, when you look inside, you've got the the framing on the inside as well. So yeah, that's a bit of a disappointment. But um, no, uh, if you're familiar with uh, James over at To Boldly Go Model Works, um, if you're not, go and have a look. I'll put a link to his channel down in the comments below. He does a lot of this Airfix, Airfix, this Tamiya 148 scale stuff. And it all looks very, very nice. And that's why I was expecting this to be stunning. Um, but uh, don't get me wrong. It's lovely. It's very, very nice. But it's not stunning. Um, particularly not for a 2023 kit. This is the kind of thing I'd expect from, you know, Italeri or Ravel. Um, I have to say, and I'm not a fanboy. I'm not an Airfix fanboy. I think if Airfix had done this in 48 scale, they'd have made a better job. I hate to say it, 
but um, this is not what we're used to and it's not actually that cheap either so I'm going to give this what I don't like to do out of 10 it's probably a 7 out of 10 you know it's nice than that but mm. anyway if you want to get one and build it along with me go and get yourself one as I say, I may well do this as a little Christmas build, but I want to do that little um, unmanned helicopter as well that the lovely Wendy sent me. I want to do that for, for a little short build as well. But uh, there's going to be a lot of little bits and pieces to learn. But if you're a beginner, I don't think you'll have any trouble with this at all. Um, and you can either ignore the bits I talk about with the ejector pin marks and the sink marks, or you can build along with me and do as I do and learn how to get rid of these problems because these problems appear on a lot of model kits. Um, you know, Airfix of old are renowned for their sink marks. You know, um, Ravel, Italeri are renowned for their ejector pin marks, and Meng. Meng are renowned for a million ejector pin marks. So uh, it's good little skills to pick up to learn. So I'll see you all soon. Um, thanks for watching. Sorry if this has been a bit of a disappointment, but uh, it certainly has been a bit of a disappointment for me. I'm not even sure how much it was. Um, let me have a look at the. I can't remember now how much it was. It was uh, £22.99. So, yeah, £22.99. So 23 quid. It's not bad for what it is. Um, but, and if you want a 148 scale K2 ambulance, you know, in injected moulding plastic, this is it, I think. So uh, there we go. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon. Wait for now.